All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. The trade deadline is over for the Rangers and for baseball in general. And it was a weird one for the Texas Rangers. Um, I don't know if all the prospects we got back in return or what we thought we'd get back in return, but it was a good trade deadline nonetheless. Um, a, a lot of stars got traded. Um, big prospects got traded. Um, it, it was interesting. Um, so, obviously, Joey Gallo got traded to the New York Yankees. We didn't get a top 100 prospect in return, but we got um, solid depth. And there were, a lot of the guys um, were impact bats. And John Daniel said that those guys were not, none of them were throwing players. They're all players he believes in. We'll see how far that goes. Um, we have to say optimistic. It's, it's kind of hard given that the um, Twins were able to trade Jose Barrios for Austin Martin and Simeon Wood um, Richardson um, with the Joey Gallo trade. I'm sure they had top 100 prospects on the board um, in a trade, but I feel like they wanted to go with um, depth over trading for one top 100 prospect, say, say they just trade for Eswato Peralta and that's it from the Yankees instead of trading for Ezekiel Duran, um, Trevor Hauber, um, Josh Smith, and Glenn Otto. We'll see how it, um, we'll see how the future goes, how these trades unfold. Remember, we did trade Lewis Brinson and Luis Ortiz to the Brewers, and none of those guys have panned out. Um, so you could think you're getting a solid prospect when in reality you aren't really. But let's talk about the Kyle Gibson and Ian Candy trade to the Philadelphia Phillies. When it was first reported, I was super stoked because all I saw and all that was first being reported was Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy for Spencer Howard. And Spencer Howard, um, I believe he is... Okay, he's 24 years old, and he was drafted in 2017 and the second round. He Last year, he was the Philadelphia Phillies' um, number one overall prospect, and he was the 28th overall prospect, according to MLB.com. Um, he has the same club control as Dane Dunning, so he'll be on the club for a long time, and he'll probably just take um, Kyle Gibson's spot in the rotation. But then I saw that we had to give get rid of Hans Kraus, and I'm like, what are we doing? Um, but we still um, were rumored to get two other prospects. So I'm like, okay, maybe we could get um, a, some solid prospects back in return. Like maybe Judd Fabian, who was the Philadelphia Phillies second round pick this year, or another one of their top prospects. However, we didn't get any uh, other of their top 30 prospects, according to MLB.com. The other two prospects that we got um, were Kevin Gowdy and Josh Gesney, two pitching prospects in the Phillies organization. And another, none of them have pitched above um, double A, or none of them have pitched above single A. Let me correct that. So I don't really know what to um, think of those prospects. Um, but I think what we need to um what we need to think about whenever we're thinking about this trade is that the Rangers really believe in Spencer Howard if they're willing to trade, um, if they're willing to trade Hans Kraus, um, because Hans Kraus was also drafted in the second round back in 2017, so the same draft class, and um, Hans Kraus has some nasty stuff. So does Spencer Howard. Um, Howard has been killing in AAA this year, and he had a brief stint in the major leagues, and he had some rough um, patches, but so has Dane Dunning. Um, so I think the Rangers really believe in what they're getting in Spencer Howard, and they have to because I don't know if Kevin Gowdy or who's this other guy, um, Kevin Gowdy or Josh Gessney, I don't even know if they're going to be anything major. Um, and we just traded Hans Kraus, Kyle Gibson, and Ian Kennedy. And I mean, I don't know how much trade value um, Kyle Gibson really had. Um, yes, he was an all-star. He's having a breakout year. But this, um, if you're another team, wouldn't you be a little worried that this is a guy who's had um, 
who's been an average, below average pitcher his entire career, and he just starts um, pitching well out of the blue all of a sudden. And, um, and yeah, he has team control for another year, which usually helps teams um, when it comes to trades. But say he gets back to his 2020 form when he was with the Rangers, that could be detrimental to a team like the Phillies or whoever um, was maybe interested in trading for him. Um, and he doesn't have too much playoff experience, say like a Max Scherzer. So that's why trade value probably wasn't the best for him. And Ian Kennedy, I don't know how much trade value he had given that he um, hasn't been doing this role for too long and um, he wasn't as hot of a commodity as Craig Kimbrell. Um, but I think we really have to, I think the Rangers really believe in Spencer Howard and I think they're really setting up their rotation because now you have Jack Leiter, um, Spencer Howard, and Colwyn, Dane Dunning, and Colby Allard. That, those are five people. Who knows what it's all going to be when it's all said and done. Hans Krause probably could have competed for that spot, but who knows if the Rangers thought of him as a long-term option um, in the rotation. Um, he's had some injuries in the past. He's had some family issues off the field, so we'll see what happens for Hans Krause. I thought he had some potential, and if not, he could have been um, a great person out of the bullpen. However, Kevin Gowdy was actually the Philadelphia Phillies second round pick um, back in 2016. So he is 23 years old, about the same age as Cole Reagans, um, but he's not pitching great. And um, low single A, he has a 4.43 ERA and a 1.36 whip. So, and that's as a starter, so I don't know. Um, so, it, so it's been a weird trade deadline and we didn't even um, trade Spencer Patton, who I believe um, had some trade value. Um, we didn't trade Brock Holt or Charlie Culberson, who I thought could have had some trade value as a versatility piece um, to some teams. And I thought we could have gotten to the market of taking on some bad contracts for some players. Like I know that the Dodgers are in the luxury tax, so maybe we could have taken on the contract of a David Price and gotten some prospects. Or I know that the Boston Red Sox are in the luxury tax, so maybe we take on Garrett Richard contracts and the Marwin Gonzalez contract. And then, um, and then we get some prospects in return as well. And Josh Gesner was actually, um, he wasn't drafted. He was, I think he was an international free agent. Um, I, I think he was an international free agent from Australia. Um, but he has a 1.17 ERA. And he's played in three games this year, um, started two of them, and he has a 0 0.78 whip. He's 21 years old, and so far that's in um, rookie ball. So I don't even know uh, what that's going to be, um, but we'll see. Spencer Howard, I think, is a plus, um, and we'll get to see him in the majors on TV and whatnot. Um, but... If we didn't have to give up Hans Kraus, I'd probably give this trade an A. But Hans Kraus is a, it, it sucks that we had to trade him, and I just don't know how to think of this trade now that we had to trade Hans Kraus. But um, trade deadline's over. Um, I do think the farm system got better. Um, we got a, a lot more depth after the Joey Gallo trade, um, and then I mean we did. Um, if you are thinking about it this way, we trade Spencer Patton for Hans Kraus in a way. Um, so we trade a what if for a more um, polished um, frontline starter and Spencer Howard. But we'll see how things unfold. Um, but thanks for staying to the very end. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.